Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium. So let's continue our investigation that got interrupted a little bit at the end of the last episode due to a crisis of morale apparently and our hero decided to just quit because of a failed skill check. So that was great. But as you can see, I'm basically back where we left off. I replayed everything since the last save which unfortunately was at the beginning of that episode, so I had to replay all of it. Um, luckily, you can skip through the dialogue pretty quickly and then it doesn't really take long to uh, get back to where you left off. But um, I still learned my lesson and I will make more like quick saves from now on, just in case uh, this happens again. And for what it's worth, I picked all the same options as before, so I didn't try other dialogue choices, but I did the same as before. Uh, except, of course, um, the one skill check that uh, screwed me up in the first place. But yeah, apparently um, he has some kind of thought at the moment, so... The theme on that what pinball is machine is a standard royalist theme, used on everything, from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Oh, so this is about the pinball machine. Why does this pop up now? This didn't happen the first time. But sure, what are its hallmarks? Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. <laughs> Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. Wait, where do I get such a crown? The idea of a king in a century gone is pretty fascinating. I'd rather know more about the world of today. Um, yeah, this might be more useful at the moment. The contemporary period stands still. The fated carousel of progress that doomed the royalists is itself winding down. Our time is <laughs> decelerating into what no one knows. Well, that doesn't sound good, but okay, um, what a random thought. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I didn't use all the dialogue options with my partner here, so I guess I will continue with that first of all. Yes? Um, yeah, I'm not going to try this again. <laughs> so what are my other options here? I think you should know that I can't remember anything. I want to talk about you. I mean, I kind of told him that already, I'm pretty sure. So, um, let's talk about you. Me? Yes. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Well, we'll work better together if we have more report. Come on, Lieutenant, open up a little. You're right. What's there to know about a lame bino clot? <laughs> bino clot? Yeah, I think, uh... Maybe we can work better together if we share some info. Hmm, that's a fair point. Hmm. Alright, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? You're wearing glasses. <laughs> you don't look like other people around here. Tell me a secret about yourself. Do you ever talk with yourself? These are all pretty weird questions. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe I can ask all of them. So, well, obviously you're wearing glasses. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. <laughs> but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Failed physical instrument. <laughs> yeah, I'm just observing. I didn't mean anything by it. Glasses are cool, I guess. <laughs> are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. <laughs> well, that's true. You don't look like other people around here. Apparently? That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. <laughs> it's not an interesting topic. Seoul, okay. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. I don't know, it might be. Seoul is a protectionist. Isolationist pan isolary state <laughs> west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Some would even say mysterious. Oh, mysterious. Uh, my encyclopedia is uh, really quite knowledgeable. I'm glad that I have it. 
Okay, I guess it's not interesting then. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about Seol. Yes, indeed. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. I'm a regular Revachelier. Okay, well, I guess that's fair enough. A point of pride to him. Um, well, uh, tell me a secret about yourself. <laughs> it's a very, um, straightforward and maybe a little bit too early uh, for this kind of request. No. <laughs> okay. Um, well, okay. The lieutenant nods. I think I probably have to uh, get to know him a little bit better first and uh, we have to work together for a while longer before I can <laughs> ask him about his secrets. So, do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? <laughs> well, you mean, like, you do, apparently. But, I mean, you have, like, um, exceedingly many different parts of your brain talking to you. And sometimes giving you, like, really poor advice, like, Inland Empire. <laughs> um, but, yeah, do you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, apparently not. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather <laughs> rudimentary. Okay. So how do you, you know, tap the side of your head? So you're saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe his brain just works differently. I guess he doesn't conceptualize it the same way we do. I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. Okay. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. Interesting. We all have our different mediums. His is written. Okay, fair enough. Um, I guess that's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. Uh, tell me about the case again. Yes, I've done this already. You seem to be following me. <laughs> yes, because he's in my party, so that's what he's supposed to be doing. Excuse me? What if I want to work this case alone? I probably shouldn't. I need someone to tell me what's going on. Beat it, you're cramping my style. <laughs> Nothing, just an observation. <laughs> I'm making a lot of, you know, just observations. You have a... Uh... A distinctive way of walking. <sighs> if I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean, distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Mm. Officers from Jamrock's 41st Precinct tend to move a bit erratically. Really? They say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm just checking out the containers first to see if there's something of interest inside. Okay. Yes, but containers contain things. Shiny things. Mm -hmm. They're interesting. Indeed. You're kidding me. Why containers? Okay, then. That's racist. I don't prioritize containers. I don't think that's what racism is. Um, interfacing. <laughs> so, why containers? I don't know. Containers contain, I guess. I'm making Indeed. assumptions. We should move on. Yes, I think it's time to finally go and uh, actually investigate the case. I'm not going to do this again. Stop asking me about it, Inland Empire. Okay. So, um... And now that all of this is done, let's finally start our investigation by talking to the barkeeper or cafeteria manager again. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. 
Um, apparently, I still haven't figured out my name and I still haven't made up one. Uh, by the way, that uh, skill check where he could uh, try to think of a name for himself, I did pass it again on my replay, but he still wasn't able to actually come up uh, with a name. The harbinger of ruins. What is golden orange like a forest fire but smells like liquor? <laughs> apparently, his name. I'm currently in between names. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. These are all pretty good answers. Um, yeah, I'm currently in between names. I, I still have to think of one. Fantastic. <laughs> He's very unimpressed. It's like when you've left your band, but you haven't decided on a solo artist name yet. Kim is about to say something. Let him. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to impress him. That's wonderful, really. I think so. But there's a dead body up back. No one wants to work in these conditions. It's been a week. Right, right. We need to take care of that dead body. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. <laughs> I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call. Correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. All right, Sylvie. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, so there we go. We can maybe ask Sylvie about it. Um, he looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper and hands it to the lieutenant. He already had the number ready. That's interesting. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. Indeed. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, <laughs> many cafeterias I manage. Right. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. Okay, um, do I have any good questions? Right then, questions, I got this. Play the fool, who me? <laughs> no, I'm good, pass on the questions. Um, I don't know. I hope I have some decent questions to ask. His face expresses profound doubt in <laughs> your having this. He's probably uh, not wrong. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. Hmm. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. That's actually good advice. Um, where exactly is the body? Who killed him? <laughs> Why did Sylvie go away? You know, I actually can't think of a single thing. Um, okay, where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there then? Yes, tell me how we get there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. <laughs> okay. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocents Franco-Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind. Fifth <laughs> century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. <laughs> okay, admittedly, some of the information the encyclopedia gives me is a little bit useless. I mean, it's a cavalry, so I, I can't imagine that it's like very big. And that the hole must be big. I understand the metaphor, even if I don't know what the uh, Franco Franco Negrian uh, cavalry is. So sometimes Encyclopedia is exaggerating a little bit with the detail. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, why did Sylvie go away? Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. <laughs> no, before I ask you where, now I'm ask asking you why she left. Yeah, that's a difference. Okay, you got me. <laughs> she went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Okay, so that's why you got her number. But apparently she did give it to you. Thank you. Mystery solved. Didn't go well. <laughs> um, well, we still don't really know who killed the guy, but I guess we have at least a lead, which is Sylvie. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. <laughs> now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Right, probably not. This stuff gets on my nerves. I'm a feminist. I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. Probably. I don't know. I just went for it. You're right. Probably should never ask. Yeah, I don't know. This might have something to do with this. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. <laughs> do you have any theory who killed this guy? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. I'm I, I'm aware of that. I'm, I'm just asking for your uh, opinion. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this hmm. they if he doesn't know? Did you kill him before you said they hoisted him up on a tree? What? Who do you mean by they? Um... Well, I mean, I'm not sure if he's referring to the fact that he uses plural, so he knows that it was like more than one person. But then again, you also use they if you just don't know who did something as like, you know, a, a pronoun for something unknown, an unknown number or, you know, people. Um, but still, let's let's try this option. Uh, oh, people are saying it was the union dock workers, okay. that it was a lynching. Okay, so that's his opinion. And who exactly is saying that? The locals, the customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Okay, so Sylvie thinks it's the dock workers. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Okay, but why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing <laughs> better to do. That is not a good motive. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. <laughs> All right, did you kill him? I mean, if he did, he wouldn't tell me, so I'm not sure if that question is really going to be helpful. Um, do I have other questions? The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Okay, apparently not. Let's go. Okay, task complete. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. <laughs> uh, what's real? I don't owe you shit. Uh, is this like money? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. <laughs> he pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic a accent. The IIR, or inter real, is the global reserve currency. Uh -huh. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Okay, by real... Do you mean some form of street cred? <laughs> oh, I understand you mean I owe you money. Yeah, that's probably what he means. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. <laughs> uh, I probably do not have the money, huh? What do I owe this place for? Well, for staying here, probably. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. Right. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. 
Mm. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but <laughs> we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And <laughs> yes, real is still money. Um, well, I probably don't have the money. What exactly is money? That's a good question. What are you, a philosopher? Actually, I might be. Since I woke up, I have trouble remembering even the most basic concept of reality. <laughs> no, I'm just getting my bearings. I don't know, I might be a philosopher. Who am I to say? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this <laughs> hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Interesting. Where do I get it from? Proceed and show him the coins you found. Is this money? <laughs> Proceed, but don't show him the coins. They're yours. Um, I found some coins, but I'm sure it's not enough to pay this bill. Yes, it is. That's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. I'm now down to 90, right? Um, hmm... I guess I can pay at least part of the bill. No, you see, that's 40 cents. <laughs> oh, cents no. are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. Okay. I'm not even going to take this. Come back <laughs> when you have 130 real. But I just lost the money. So if he didn't take it, clearly I should still have it. <laughs> that's horrible indeed. It is. He stands silently looking at the coppers on the counter. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude <laughs> between what is asked of a person and what they have? Darkness rides. Pick up the coins. Keep it to yourself and pick up the coins. Uh, yeah, let's just pick up the coins. Let's let's not try to get to like dark thoughts because this might damage his morale again and then um, I have to replay everything. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his <laughs> orange bomber. Maybe he can pay my bill. <laughs> or would that be too much to ask? Um, what happens now? Should I just arrest him? I'm not sure that, that would work out. Uh, I don't know, let's try it. You can't arrest me. I haven't done anything. <laughs> um, put this man in his place. Sylvie incident known. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. Uh, I'm not sure about my odds here. I don't know why I said that. I thought it's something a cop would say. <laughs> Probably. I don't really need you to say anything. I just need the money. Mm, but what if I don't have any money? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Okay. Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. <laughs> Fuck this place. I'll take my chances on the streets. Um, well, maybe I can stay somewhere else. You mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? <laughs> I don't think so. The union squeezed most places out of business to fund the strike. You're better off home. Hmm. Yeah, I may not have a home. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Right. Good luck. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so I have to find myself some money in order to pay By my bill. By the way, bill. where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. As I said, I don't think I have one. Well, I may have one, but if I don't remember it, it doesn't really matter, huh? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You <laughs> had to be somewhere. I don't know. Near? South, maybe? Far away? Up on Marvel Hill? I have no idea. You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? I have... Only a vague blackened image. I mean, that's at least a vague image. A vague blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere <laughs> you can stay if you run out of money. 
Could I trace a way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building? I live in a dumpster, I don't care. Fuck everything. Hobocop. <laughs> Hobocop. Uh, no, I think I would prefer to find my home, actually. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment okay. will appear. So I might be able to find my home. <laughs> Let's see, what did I just get here? Oh, it's something else I can internalize. But I already started doing this. So I feel I should finish this first. I'm not sure what exactly uh, the time frame is here and how time moves in this game, but it's like done about a third, so I'm just going to keep doing it. Um, right, I got more tasks. Who made the call reporting the crime? Someone reported the hanging to the RCM. Maybe if you find out who it was, it may shed new light on the events. You have an idea where to start, but the caller could have been anyone. Called Sylvie using Kim's shortwave to ask whether she made the call. Right. You need to pay for the damages you caused in the whirling in wrecks, or you won't have a place to stay tonight. <laughs> ask around for money and be careful with your spending. If you're unsure how much you owe, ask guard. Ask your station for additional funds. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that's quite a few tasks ahead of us. And, um, I, I guess I'm probably done here. So, is this uh, where I leave? Also, let's not forget a quick save. Alright, here we are on the outside. Um,. Let's look at some stuff first. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. The street sign reads, fuck the police. Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. Um, there's more stuff I can look at, but maybe we want to talk to this person first. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? The gardener. Um, well, yeah, you sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Okay, well, I have some questions for you, maybe. Of course. What can I help you with? We need directions. What is this fuck the police business? Who are you exactly? Um, yeah, tell me more about this fuck the police stuff on the walls. Excuse me? The street sign says fuck the police. Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Oh, what about the other sign? Pigs go home. Who are these pigs? I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write it. All right. Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. <laughs> It's not loving. Clearly. No need to worry. We are not saying you did. Okay. Well, I didn't. Alright, so who are you? Me? I am just a gardener. She hides it well. But behind the sweat and dirt there is something else. In her rigid posture. <laughs> There's more to you than that. Cool, and what are you doing here? Good to meet you, just a gardener. Another question then. <laughs> oh, I don't know, my composure seems to think there's more going on. Is there? The quickness of the reply certainly does not prove you wrong. Yes, what are you doing here? Maybe not. Pleased to meet you, just a gardener. I have another question. Um, yeah, sure, let's uh, insist on this. I am working. On what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. But? Well, as you probably know, <laughs> there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Okay, so well, the corpse is interrupting your work. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. 
You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Salts? Ammonium salts? Perhaps useful for later. Yeah, I guess to cover up the smell of the dead body. Um, yeah, um, we may need some directions. Since the street signs messed up? <laughs> okay, what do you need? So where exactly is the corpse? It's there. In the yard, right through the hole in the fence. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the <laughs> spring air. Okay, and where am I? <laughs> What do you mean? I'm a bit disoriented. This is River Shaw, right? Uh, that's uh, what I could uh, gather for uh, by now. Yes, sir. District of Martinez. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. <laughs> uh, for good reason. So tell me more about what's going on north, except the corpse. There's the pier, the Capeside apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. And what is in the east? The harbour gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. And what is in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident probably. And what is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. And what about the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. All right, I'm not sure if any of that information is really useful for me at the moment, but thank you anyway. No problem. She's very well composed. Back straight. All right, um, I guess that's all I can ask at the moment. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her bra with her canary yellow glove. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Oh. One more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? No, those gloves aren't really my style. Ah, no. They might be useful. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. <laughs> okay, there we go. I just got some gloves. Can I already put them on? Thick latex gardening gloves and a classic canary yellow. Maybe you should retire, take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a thought. Uh, we're not going to retire just yet. Not again. Let's put on the gloves. <laughs> Great. They they really add uh, to your outfit. But yeah, um, they give me more interfacing, so that's good. Um, right. That was useful, I guess. Um, okay. Maybe before I go and check out the cops, I will have a quick look at some other stuff, at least stuff that's nearby. Close for winter. Please use main entrance. Right. Goods from the lorry haphazardly lit up the surroundings. Okay, we got some stuff over there, but maybe um, I will wait with that for later. I may want to talk to this guy, though. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. <laughs> Feel like a traveler. The man mutters to himself, accenting the beat as he goes. <laughs> Tommy Leom. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. Keep listening. I am the law. What's going on here? <laughs> sure, let's keep listening. From another planet. <laughs> hey there. Um, I am the law, apparently. You sure are, my man. <laughs> I, I didn't uh, expect such um, uh, enthusiastic reply. So, what's going on here? It's the jam, my man. 
He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with sweeping gesture. The air from the east is thick with the smell of crude oils, heavy metals and other byproducts of the modern era. You can almost taste it. Uh, what exactly is the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all-around clusterfuck. All right. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. <laughs> upon L days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. So how long have you been here? I may be in limbo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber <laughs> of the afterlife. Uh, let's hope not. So how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy few oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. <laughs> or he just likes unusual words. Or both. Nothing wrong with that. I dig your style, man. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. I don't quite understand what you just said. Could you say it again, only a little less plodding? No, I can totally roll with it. Thankfully, I have my encyclopedia to help me out with stuff like that. Although in this case, it was actually drama. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. <laughs> so tell me, what do you need? Care to spare some change for a working stiff? Tell me more about this strike. I know anything about the dead man, the one hanging behind the hostel there, point at the yard. What are you hauling anyway? I'm good for now. <laughs> good talk. Uh, can I can I get some money from him? Is this how this go is going to go? I have to ask everyone for money so I can pay uh, my bill. Huh? Oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. Who is they? The bosses, man. I see. Makes sense. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. So you're broke. Got it. What else did I have to ask you? Um, yeah, I guess it is a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck. Huh? If I had, say, four myself. <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say, but... I guess it doesn't help if you don't have any money. Um, okay, tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Going on strike would probably help you dodge a bullet or two. Maybe I should go on a strike. What's the union demanding? Anything else I should know. Um, so yeah, what exactly is the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? <laughs> I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. <laughs> so maybe I should go on a strike as well. Maybe you should. Cops don't get paid much in the hours alone. Plus, you can get shot. Why not? Right. The RCM is a self-managing organization that operates on donations. We promote our own leaders. It would be like striking against your own <laughs> mother. Well, that's interesting. A self-managing organization that operates on donations? <laughs> okay. I don't know my mother, but I'd go on strike against her too, for my rights. Hmm, I guess you've got a point there. No, your mother. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Maybe you have a point there. Yes, but do continue. You were asking about the strike? Right. Um, so what do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. Right. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. Hmm. That's for sure. Okay. So, anything else I should know? Anything else? 
Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. <laughs> All of us? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. <laughs> not that I blame them, really. But not you. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. <laughs> Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road towards the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, again, that is uh, not going to work. I'm pretty sure I will lose this check because apparently I do not have a lot of empathy. I mean, it's a white check. You may retry it. <laughs> but the last time I did it, um, it ended pretty bad for me. So maybe I'm not going to do this. Um, no, anything about the dead man, the one hanging behind the hostel there. Um... Yeah, let's, let's maybe uh, talk about the dead person finally. Or do we want to ask about what he's hauling? Let's do this first. Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal <laughs> firearms, stuff like that. Really? Relax. He's merely joking. <laughs> You're under arrest. Wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Okay, and what are you actually hauling? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to assume this is indeed a joke. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. <laughs> I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits and that kind of thing. Tracksuits? <laughs> okay. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. Hmm. So these are other places on this world. So nothing illegal then. That's your machine behind you. Could I get one of these foul tracksuits you're hauling? <laughs> I mean... Maybe this would improve your style a little bit. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. Mm. The bosses won't be happy. Yeah, I, I, I thought so. So, is that your machine behind you? This rocking beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. I clicked continue a little bit too quick on this one. Um, that's a found A6 you got there. So again, I can kind of break with my encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah, those lorries are pretty neat. Interested? Not really. I just asked because, I don't know, it must be a cop reflex. Yeah, let's use my useless information here. Good eye, my man. Yup, <laughs> she's an old one. But reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. So you have nothing illegal in there? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment <laughs> while I was on the road. Probably not. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Okay, now let's finally ask about the dead person. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark <laughs> stuff. So what have you been busy with? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological <sighs> conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Deep, deep stuff, man. Ask for his conclusion. <laughs> well, thank you for the advice. So what is your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. <laughs> okay, um, so you think this is just completely normal that people are hanging in trees being dead. Okay, um, I guess that's good for now. Maybe I will come back later and uh, try this check, but with only 3%, I don't think this is going to work. Don't be a stranger. He gives a salute with two fingers. Alright, well, um, that was an interesting conversation, although I don't think it really uh, gave me much in terms of usefulness. 
Can I look at whatever this is over here? I have to go quite some long distance for that though. A bold slogan, Humanox covers the truck. Alright, it's probably not helpful at all. Okay, um, yeah, maybe I don't want to uh, get too sidetracked here. So, since the episode is getting kind of long, maybe I'm going to make a cut here. And then hopefully in the next episode we will be able to finally uh, check out the dead body. Although I may want to check out whatever that is over here, that car. But yeah, <laughs> it's time to finally get into the actual uh, investigation and uh, see what's going on here. But for now, let's call it a day, as always. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.